Dear Father, thank you, Lord God, for a brand new day, another chance, another opportunity to get everything in right order. Thank you, Father, for all that you've already done in and through our lives. Thanking you, Father, for our lying down on last evening. You keeping us, Father, safe throughout the night. And letting us, allowing us to come forward, Father, with all strength and things that we need to be able to stand in this new day. How awesome and great that really are. So thank you, Father. We're very grateful for all the good things and merciful, gracious things that thou has done in and in our lives. So bless this day, Father. Help us to not only be blessed in this day, but to be a blessing to some others, whomever we may meet. So you, Father, anoint your man servant that you will select us and also let it be over the ministry and help us to all follow pay attention and be attentive to what he thus said here today and bless all the sick everywhere follow all over the world all the bereaved families and bless all the less fortunate all those that hadn't got to know you yet even in the free part of their sin help them to realize that they too must be saved. And so we thank you, Father, for this day. And let your spirit abide richly with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Now we have our fourth commandment recited by Brother Ross, found in Exodus 28 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep home. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy works, but the seven days the seventh day, the Lord thy God. And then thou shalt not do any work, thou know thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy mantle, nor thy mantle, nor thy cow, nor thy strangers, those within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all thy wisdom is. And what's that the seventh day? Well, for the Lord was the seventh day, and out of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. I record a little that just passed up. Okay, amen, amen, praise God. Now we'll have a Help the Living segment, amen. 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 And I'll be doing that Help the Living segment today by the grace of God. Amen. And uh, the topic is called Brain Food and Heart Food. What's the name? Brain Food, Heart Food. Amen. And the topic, <laughs> and that's the subject, so the, the topic is food for thought, food for thought. Okay. And so now when you think of brain food and health food, what comes to your mind? Well, oh, go ahead, Brother Roy. Hmm? Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. When, when I think of brain food, I think of, you know, natural foods. Okay. You know, um, but, at the same time, health food, you could think the same thing. Um, with health heart food, food. So brain food and heart food. Health food, oh, oh, I see it. You said brain food and health food or brain food and heart food? Brain food and heart food. Okay, then thank you. Okay, that does help. Yeah, when I think of heart food, I think of, for our spirit man, um, spiritual, the bread of life, the word of God. When I think of brain food, I'm thinking of natural, those things we consume, natural foods that we consume to help our brain, our mind be alert and able to, our body to function um, as it should. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about Waning food, giving healthy food, and giving you natural things that you need and will make you not get like sick and stuff like that. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I think that uh, the brain food is food that's rich in nutrients that's uh, in the natural essence. Uh, more so like the plants and the nuts. And it's been proven that a lot of the different berries and have antioxidants and some of the nuts they do as well. And that's good for our hearts or whatever from some of what we've learned. So 
And once you put that together, combine that together, that is food for thought. Because if you know, the cell structure is right, and the blood the vessels are full of the right nutrients, you will have that's food for thought. You'll think clearly. Amen. Okay. All right. Can you say your question again so I can? I may, I may not have heard it clearly. I said uh, one of the subjects is called brain food and heart food. And I asked the question when, when you heard when you hear that word brain food and heart food, what comes to your mind? It's not a right or wrong answer. Yeah, well, for me, when you, I, yeah, I just want to hear brain food to me is, is that is, is food that will help your uh, thinking capacity, your intellectual thinking capacity. Um, I guess, you know, because I think there are probably all certain foods that you can eat that help with your cognitive capacity and then your heart food. You know, I just, to me, that, that, they're probably things that probably deal with blood flow. Like, you know, um, yeah, blood flow, I would probably, if I, that, that's probably the most lip, best way I can describe it. But, but, you know, it's not good, not, it's good for your overall body in one sense, because whatever's going to help you know, low cholesterol, produce low cholesterol, things that's going to help with the blood flow in your body, which pertains to your heart. Okay. All righty. Uh, now, I said it's not a right or wrong answer. I, I incorrectly, I'm not looking for a particular answer. There is a right or wrong answer, but I'm not looking for a particular answer. All right, now, I'm, I'm, now I'll put it this way. Uh, 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 go ahead. I'm thinking about um, greens, Vegetables and um, two things. If you got God, he, he heals the body. But we have to put in the body the right foods for the body that helps it to function in the proper Essence. Okay. All right. Now I will put it this way. Brain food and heart food, food for thought. Now what comes to your mind? The same thing come to your mind or something different come to your mind? When I say brain food and heart food, food for thought. So now do the same concept come to your mind or something else come to your mind? No, something else comes now. All right, what comes to your mind now, then, brother? Is that spiritual food? Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. All right. If not anyone else, you know, brother Wayne said. Right, brother Wayne said, all seem to be the same to him. That's what it appears to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, and, 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 you know, food is, the Bible said, give them meat in due season, right? Yeah. So every time you hear food, you're not really talking about food. That's right. You could be talking about the word of God, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Or could be talking about sound doctrine. Amen. So to clear up some, some misconceptions that many, 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 many people have about what constitutes death. Now, do anyone know the difference between medically, clinically, and dead? Medically dead, clinically dead, and dead. So let me put it this way. If your heart stopped beating for a few seconds, are you dead? No. no not necessarily. Oh, you know what? We got Trina on the line. That's praise be to God. Wow. No. I just thought, what a blessing. <laughs> what a blessing. I need you to chime in, sister, if I, if I step off the, uh, of the realm of, of, the, of the word that I should not be speaking. Because I, you know, I went to medical sister school, but I got this this morning from the Holy Spirit. And then, oh, okay, no, no, you're fine. If you're awake, just you can listen and you gotta chime in. Okay, I'm good. So, brothers and sisters, so uh, now 
if your brain stopped working and your heart's still beating, are you con are you are you dead? Yes. No. Oh. Somebody Clinically. said yes. Somebody said no. Clinically. Clinically. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're dead. So, brain comes in every, the whole part of the body. So when we when a person says, "Well, my heart stopped beating, I was dead," and they had to revive me, is that a true statement? No. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Because we're told people, "Oh, he died. His heart stopped beating." That we got it. You know, I heard a statement last night, and I and I was laying on my bed this morning, and the Lord said I need to deal with that. So I asked Sister Michelle. Well, I don't know if I asked him, I told her, I, I, think, I think I probably told her, like, hey, I, I need to do the uh, kept the living segment today because we, we need to clear this up. Brothers and sisters, when your, when your heart stops beating, that doesn't mean you're dead. Now, you got a few minutes before you be con considered dead, and that's different between medically or clinically, which is the same thing, and being dead. Clinically that's dead, right. medically dead, the same thing. And Dead is some is some different. So, yeah. so we per, now so now. Have you heard of the terminology or the saying that people are brain dead? Yes, mm -hmm. but yeah. not. I mean, we say that all the time about people walking, and living, talking. But we say we say brain dead. We're trying to say <laughs> they have no sense, but not that way. Not I'm talking about in, in the sense of an accident or, or whatever it may be, or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so when we say. Someone when they someone said someone is brain dead, what are they saying? Yeah. There's no functionality from the brain. Meaning? Meaning because that. the Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 14, I think, we are mm -hmm. fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And yeah, there's more to the to that to that verse. But go ahead, okay. Brother Brother Roy. No, I was just saying uh, when uh, the brain's when the brain is inactive. What's gonna send the neurons throughout the brain to the different parts of your body, your nerve cells, and all this, and then make them come back to the synopsis and all these things. And I done a study on this some time ago, <clears throat> but anyway, okay. and a lot of times they're kept on a ventilator to see if they can get some activity back in the brain. A lot of time it, it doesn't it doesn't actually return. So yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Anyone else? Little Roy can't come. Say again. Roy, elder, he's trying to say something. Come on, come on, please. Um, what was gonna say that with the brain of bunch one, how are you gonna move your body? That's that. That's good. Good question. <laughs> Amen. Hmm. All right. So. Have anyone heard of the, the uh, U D D A U as an umbrella, D as in Delta, D as in Delta, A as an act, U D D D A, U D D A. I know Sister Trina, I've heard of U D D A. It is Uniform Determination of Death Act. Uniform Determination of Death Act. Now, what that is. And I, you know, matter of fact, uh, but I didn't, uh, my answer didn't come from me in this morning. My answer came from the Holy Spirit. But I just, I just went back and looked at it to see, you know, because I know some people may not believe what the Lord says, but they'll be what man says. So, um, Uniform Determination of Death Act, UDDA, UDDDA, provides a comprehensive legal basis for determining. Death in all situations, this is a technical act that merely defines death clinically and does not deal with suicide, assisted suicide, or right to die, okay? So, uh, now, it clearly states, an individual who has sustained either irreversible cessation of secretory and respiratory function or irreversible cessation of all function of the entire brain, including the brain stem, is dead. So in other words, you lose air, brain function, heart function, you, you're dead. Right. So either some people, they say they, they, they stop breathing and all either their, 
their heart's still breathing and their brain doesn't function. They ain't getting no neurons, electrons, and no sensory nerves to the, to the stem. So, cause we know the, the heart does what? Pump blood, blood and what? Oxygen. To the, throughout the whole body, right? Yes, it does. And then the, those red blood cells carry what? Oxygen to the brain. Yeah. So therefore, by, by us knowing that, when we heard people say, oh, I died because my heart stopped. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, oh, I died twice. No. No, no, you don't die. Because the heart stopped beating twice. Now, as a, after a period of time, if you don't get the oxygen and blood circulating, and that's why they give them CPR, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So keep that keep the oxygen in the body so you can keep the heart beating and so they can get blood to the brain before the brain stops. Because if a person is brain dead, they may live on and be a vegetable, maybe in a comatose state, or may end up if the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the heart stopped beating for such a period of time, they could be revived, but they may have a, a paralysis or, or they may not be able to talk or, or they may live, but not the same life they lived before. So, right. but if the brain and a heart stop after a period of time, if the brain stops after a period of time, you're going to be more of a vegetative state. But if, if you can get both of them to working, uh, get blood to the body and the brain and the function and get those electrical uh, neutrons, electrons run into your body, then you can the, the brain can continue to function at its pace and won't lose no vital organs, no sensories, no, you know, none of those things. So why am I saying that to say this? When we heard people say, oh, he died, we got to inquire. And most of the time they're saying, because my heart stopped. Mm. And that don't mean you, your heart stopped. That don't mean you're dead. Because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If they in that in that state, how they know their heart stopped? They died. Somebody told them. How they know they, <laughs> they died? Why? Somebody told them. That's right. And they could have told them a lie. And you know what? You you faint. You think you did, <laughs> but you're not. You just fainted. You you don't remember anything. Uh uh. But you may, I'm not saying you think you died, but but what I'm saying, I see here, Brother King, but what I'm saying is that that you may believe that you don't remember anything. That's where I'm going with that statement. Brother King, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I, I believe if, if, if that was the definition of death, the NFL football player um, a, a couple of weeks ago, they, they collided and they had to revive him on the field with um, the EKG machine or whatever you call it. Right. But his heart stopped. Mm. So it's under your definition, if that was the definition of death, you could say he died because they had to do it to him twice. Right. So he was yeah. at the hospital and he was right. on So he right. didn't die, but I mean, he was about to die, <laughs> but they revived him. Mm. <laughs> right. And that's why people say, and that's why people say, well, uh, uh, he died because the heart stopped. No, they don't understand. They not have done their research. And I you know I heard the statement last night. I didn't, I didn't make a comment on it. But then I was laying in my bed this morning and thinking, talking to the Lord, and the Lord gave me all this information that I needed to share with us. And then I went back and like I said, I ain't gonna believe man, they ain't gonna believe God, but they'll believe what man says. So after God showed it to me, I just went in and found it. And then I was not checking God out by, by, by what's, what man says. I was just having that information in case someone wanted to go research it and find out what the scientific, so-called science, uh, Foster so called wanted to see. Yes, ma'am. Uh, whoever the hand is. You know, um, that made it, it um, took my mind to the little girl. You know, okay. uh, wasn't her father, he, she, he went, you know, um, um, I forgot how the story go, but I remember the little girl, she um, um, needed some help. Mm -hmm. And the only person that could help was Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I believe that when things happen like that and we come back, let's give God the glory and right. the praise and the honor because it's his doing yeah. oh. that kept us alive yeah. and brought us back. Can I, amen. Can I share this right here, Brother Mark, briefly? Uh, Go ahead, bro. This happened and it was... It was actually put in the media about an occurrence such as similar to what Sister Mary was talking about, what you all were talking about. 
this person was yeah, man had been in a was injured or something, had been injured. And they got him to the hospital. And he flatlined. And you know, they say after so many minutes, they determine you that it's dead and just no need to try anything else. And so the nurse said she was she was the nurse was was doing still continuing doing CPR and the doctor told her, just stop. He's mm -hmm. gone in. She said, no, let's just try a little bit, a little bit longer. And he had, I think he had exceeded the seven minutes, to three minutes, to five minutes, then seven minutes. And he was just telling me, you need to stop. And he started to, as he was covering him up with the white sheet, he started breathing and started talking to him. Right. So just like Sister Mary was saying, we can't say until God says it's over. It ain't right. over. Mm -hmm. Right. right. So, and, 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 and like, like, and, and this is another, another example, then we'll bring this to a close. This is another example why, you know, they're not dead. Because when they wake up, they say, oh, I saw a bright light. Well, you, you everybody died. They didn't say, and the Bible ain't say they saw anything. Right. Amen. So everything you, you was, and, you know, and just like, now I'm, I'm going to liken this into, to uh, sleep. Uh, just like um, when you sleep. You're unconscious. That's right. You don't know what's going on. You have all kinds of crazy dreams sometimes. And uh, so, uh, so when people say, "Oh no, I, I was dead," they say, "I died twice." I remember I, was, I saw a big light and I saw. Oh, okay, yeah, you know you wasn't dead. You saw that. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I saw somebody's hand. Finger. You know, it's the light of God that you saw. Well, not all. Not well. Not not always. Sometimes it's that medication they own that they or they just imagine. Oh, yeah, oh, they I, got up and saw the light from the ceiling. If it ain't dark, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a good point. The hallucination. hallucination. Right, hallucination. Yeah. Make it up, yeah. Amen. All right, so I'm gonna read what's one thing, then we're gonna go to our song, then we're gonna go to our question, then we're gonna go to our Bible study by God's grace. This is what it says here. Another, another statement I'm gonna read. Clinically dead. Breathing and consciousness will cease within a few seconds of the heart stopping. <clears throat> clinically, clinically, death is reversible. Researchers believe that there is a window of about four minutes from the moment with the cardiac arrest to the development of a serious brain damage. Amen. It says, usually a person is declared clinically dead when the blood circulation and the breathing completely stops. The differences in the case of declaring someone legally dead is, a, is that restitution, resuscitation is not possible. See, usually a doctor must declare that a person is dead or body must be found for legal death declaration, meaning that both is stopped of a period of time and no revive. That's when you, that's when you consider actually dead, dead, dead. But in that case, nobody would be dead. Nobody would die. I mean, the way that people said my heart stopped, a lot of people heart stopped. And someone told me, your heart stopped, you died. And that's where they get that from. <laughs> a misconception of what, what, what death is. All right, any questions or comments before we move on to our song service? So we said brain dead, clinically dead, and did we say what medically dead is? Is that the medically same dead. thing? Medically dead and clinically dead is the same thing. Okay. And then the third, there were three though. What was the third one? Dead. You heard me? Right. Phys like physically dead. Well, all of this physically, but it's dead. You're dead. No, no coming back until Christ come back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now praise God. All right. Now we have a, a dozen more comments or questions. Now we have a song service um, by the Harleys. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> oh, man. <clears throat> hey, when I rose this morning, let us go. <clears throat> when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. Knew that the Lord will bring me out. I fell out on my knees. I 
said, Lord, help me, please. I got up singing, shouting the victory. Well, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Cause victory today is mine. Joy is mine. No, joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I fell all on my knees. I said, Lord, help me, please. I got up singing, shouting the victory. Yeah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, sailor, to get thee behind. Cause victory today is mine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, good morning, Holy Sabbath. I have been um, pondering this morning what the Lord would have us to to, just, to study. And I know we, we, we're going to continue to study on the subject called the tidings. And uh, we were talking about the second coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, but, you know, why is it the second coming of Christ is very important. Amen. Amen. But what is, is as much as important or as equal as important is us knowing what we need to do to be prepared for Christ's second coming. Don't, is that not important? Amen. So if you know Christ is coming, but you don't know what to do to prepare for Christ's coming, then what good did you know Christ is coming? Amen? Amen. So today's subject is called the midnight cry. The midnight cry. But before we start there, brothers and sisters, let us go to our question for the day. That's to go to our question before the day. Um, and what's the subject today, brothers and sisters? The midnight cry. Midnight cry. And we're going we got long, we got a lot to cover. So I may ask for sacrifice today. God may ask for sacrifice today. So, brothers and sisters, let us go to our question for the day that can be found in, in Isaiah 10:1 to get our thoughts to thinking. Isaiah what? 10:1. 10:1. Amen. And this morning I spent a little, the Lord had me to research a lot on the midnight cry. A lot. So I hope you'll be blessed as I am always blessed by God's word. You get that say amen. I just attend one. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone there? Okay, I assume we all in Isaiah 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 1 reads, Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievous they have prescribed. Let me read it again. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievous, grievousness that they have prescribed. What is the parallel? In that verse, they make laws they're not gonna follow. Okay. Yeah, I immediately think of the National Sunday Law. Just okay. we just have the decree and a law, and of course, history repeats itself. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar made that decree in Daniel. Um, 
that that they should bow down and or when when that music started to play that they had they should bow down and worship the image mm. that's right so so I, we might not even have to turn there so but we'll get scriptures so we know that the first decree went out as we know it in daniel <laughs> nebuchadnezzar like sister michelle said the nebuchadnezzar that can found in daniel chapter 2 Verses one through ten, and he made the decree that what all was should do what worship what the golden image. image right the worship image amen and so now what other decree was is given that says about worship the national Sunday law which can found where Revelation the thirteen is it yes ma'am verse eleven through eighteen. All right, so the all will worship the beast, right? And those who not worship will be killed. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now you see those two have parallels. Now here you here that's going to cause you to think a little bit. What other decree in Daniel that was put forth? Talking about the that the one that after <clears throat> Daniel had to read, uh, told him what the dream was that he couldn't make no they served any other god beside the one Daniel served they were going to be killed that one that one gentlemen yes sir Daniel six one let's go to Daniel six one through nine Daniel chapter six one through nine who gave that who gave that decree mm -hmm. the same king the king. No, it wasn't the same king. Was it Belshazzar? Nope, it's not Belshazzar. It wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. So. Darius? Darius, yes. So Darius. we did that, brothers and sisters. Yeah. I, can someone read Daniel 6, 1 through 9? I read it. Okay. <laughs> we all are there, brothers and sisters? Amen. All right. It, it pleased Daniel to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give a counsel to them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find a case against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the councilors, and the captains, they consulted together to establish their royal statute and to make him a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save a be, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it may be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, well, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Hey, so now what's the difference between? Okay, so let, let me ask you this way. The, the decree made by Nebuchadnezzar was it what? That everybody should do what? Bow down and worship the golden image. All right, and the, and the decree that's passed in Revelation 13 says what? <clears throat> Revelation 13. Of the, the national, a national Sunday law, they will not be able to buy nor sell. But they should do what? Except they um, worship. Except, except they worship the beast, right? Amen. Right. So mm -hmm. now, what? So you see, those two parallels are the same, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right so what's the parallel between Daniel chapter six and what's the other parallel? 
Oh, you know, is that, let me ask you a question. Do you see the difference between Daniel chapter six and Daniel chapter two, where Nebuchadnezzar done, where the Darius is done? Amen. You know, okay, what yeah. I'm saying, but do you see it? Amen, you see it, or amen, you don't see it? Well, was it, just a clarification, was it one for a golden image? And then the other one was to, was to the king himself, correct? Not the king himself. Mm -mm. Where it says, ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king. Right. But so so what it was, it was not so he didn't say you need to worship me. He said, he said, if you gonna don't you don't need to do what? He said, if you ask. So in <laughs> other words, if you're not asking, you're not what? Receiving. You're not worshiping, right? Worship. Okay. So mm. now, but there is another parallel in the Bible and history that correlates with that same thing. What is it? That's why I say you got to think. There's a direct, there's another correlation with Daniel chapter six. It is the same thing. I won't tear it long with this. Let me show you how you don't see how close y'all been listening to all these Bible studies in time past. Now, by the way, I've never asked this question before, but I've taught on the subject before. What other, what other event in history and in the Bible that correlates with Daniel chapter six? Because clearly Daniel chapter one, Daniel chapter two said, you need to worship this image as a beast. You need to worship this image. And Daniel chapter 13 said, you need to worship the beast, the image of the beast. But Daniel chapter 6 said, you know, hey, you, you don't have to worship anybody. It's not Constantine what he did. Are you guessing or are you asking? I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing. We don't guess here. If we don't guess them, we don't guess. We don't speculate, no guess. Oh, <laughs> we couldn't give you an answer. We, I can give you, I can give you, a, I can give you a think? answer. It might be the one you're looking for. Well, I mean, it's not the one, I know the one, yeah, but I want you to guess, I want you to say, I, I believe it's this. I don't, you start, I guess you got many guesses. Well, yeah. I believe, yeah. Go ahead on, Sister Michelle, I'm going after you. No, that was, then I changed my answer. Yeah, I, I believe, but I'm not sure about when Constantine established the, he changed the, um, it wasn't a decree, but it was a. The Sunday worked. Right. No, that's not it. Brother Ken, then we're going to go, go, go and give you the answer. Uh, I'm only going to say this because when I first read 10 1, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness they have prescribed. Before I got my first answer, the first thing I was thinking about was the dark ages when the papacy issued decrees and they and their right grievousness, which was. This why, that's why I said this might not be the answer you're looking for. Hold on, but back up. The paper didn't write. Back up a little few years. Back up, back up. The papers didn't do it. <laughs> Who, what happened right before the paper? Right, what happened between that time frame? You got the right time frame. You just got the wrong person. What, right between that time frame. In that time frame, something happened. I mean, I was, like I said, the Pope. The... No, it wasn't the Pope. Well, the Pope always want to see you. Pope ain't telling you not to worship. He wants you to worship him, so not him. We found, oh. that, in that, we found that in Revelation 13. No, I was talking about decrees, though, but anyway. Yeah, I'm saying the decree. The Pope, they didn't put no decree out then. No. I yeah, thought, not, I thought not it was decrees for the, there weren't, it wasn't a decree for, the, for, for them to persecute the Christians. Those weren't decrees. I mean, that, there was an order given, but it was a decree that they should worship. Oh. But that, that yeah, it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was anybody who, uh, who didn't, yeah. But what, but what, but you know, during that time frame, but see, that, that's, but during that time frame is what they did, but the, it was called in the dark. It was called. Y'all ever heard the word? Matter of fact, let me read. Let's go to Revelation thirteen, Revelation eleven. I mean, Revelation eleven, one through thirteen. I'm gonna see if you remember. Revelation what? Yeah, one through thirteen. All right. And what time frame? Just can we we get back to this? Yeah, Amen. Somebody, can someone read it for us, please? Amen. Amen. Everybody get that first. Revelation eleven, verse one through thirteen. I'm there. Amen. All right. So can someone read? Yeah. It says, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for he is given unto the Gentiles, 
and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must this, in this matter be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they, the, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see, shall, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered, entered into him, into them, and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their, and their enemies beheld them. In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tip part of the, the, of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and, and, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the, to the God of heaven. Amen. Um, so, Y'all have y'all remember the French Revolution? Amen. Now, what happened during the French Revolution? Y'all, y'all, who took the Pope in captivity in 1798? It was the French, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, when the Bible says that he took these these two prophets that tormented them and threw them in the streets, mm -hmm. because Rome had persecuted and tormented. France so, so much that they didn't want to have anything else to do with God. They didn't want to worship God nor anybody else. They didn't want to have nothing to do with worship. So mm -hmm. therefore, they took the Bible and burned them in the streets. And, uh, and then they made themselves from a seven-day week to a 10-day week. And then they said, Every, everybody just have a good time. They had a, this woman, naked woman, on a on on a uh, uh, a cart carried it through the to the halls of their Congress, and they had a good time, and they 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 had a great time because of the French Revolution, because of the fact that they were persecuted by Rome so much they didn't want to have anything to do with God, the worship man or God. Now, what time was that? Wasn't during the Dark Ages, was it? That's what. That's why I told Ken to back up a little bit in the middle of the dark age. 1789. It, it happened from 1789 to 1999. 19, 1789 to 1799. When the Lewis is 16. So again, that's why the parallel of, of Daniel one, Daniel two. I mean, in Revelation thirteen and Daniel six, because they didn't know. But again, remember the whole. Regardless, Satan was in what? Satan was in what? Both of them was it not? Yeah. Satan, you know, Satan wants you to worship him, but if you don't worship him, as long as you're not worshiping God, he don't care. Because to not to worship God, you worship who? Satan. By default. So, so when Nebuchadnezzar made that decree, saying everybody should worship the beast, he wanted people to worship his name, the image that he set up. When, when in Revelation 13, when they say worship the beast or the image of the beast and the beast, then they want you to worship man, right? Both of men. <laughs> but then you come to Daniel chapter six. Look, you ain't got to worship anyone. Say, and then you go, and then here in Revelation 11, in the French Revolution, they didn't care if you worship anybody. They don't want you to worship nobody. They want to live free. 
Mm. Amen. And so that's why, that's why, brothers and sisters, we have to watch the snares and the trapping of Satan. Amen. Right. Amen. But people say, well, you know, if you're not worshiping God, you're doing okay. You're not worshiping the devil, you're not worshiping God, then ain't nothing wrong. Yeah, yes, it is something wrong. Do <laughs> not to worship God is always wrong. Amen. 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 Any question on that? Is that clear? You see the, sim the similarities there? Yeah. Amen. Any question on that? No, just can you clarify again the decree in Revelation 11? When they made the decree and said that they were not going to worship God nor man, they threw the Bibles away because the Pope, the, uh, Rome had persecuted them so much, and they took the Roman captivity, Roman captivity. They didn't want to worship God. They made a seven, they made a 10 day week. And they threw the Bible, they threw the Bible in the street and burned the Bible. But then they finally realized that they couldn't live without they, they couldn't live without God. Yeah. Amen. The God, the God is a reasoning. Amen. That's what they did. That's what they wanted to worship. Anyone else? Is that clear, Michelle? Yes. Praise God. Brothers, y'all can find this in uh, Great Country Rush. French Revolution, right there. All right. If there's no more questions, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, once again, Lord, we thank you for your word. As we open your word, Lord, once again, in the name of Jesus Christ, arrest our attention and let us be mindful of the time we're living in, Lord. And please prepare us to receive your soon coming and that we may be ready. Lord, as we study the subject of midnight crime, what a profound subject. And at a time such as this, that you're giving us this message. Not because man says so, Lord, because it is needed. Because the people are scattered without a shepherd. And Lord, you've told us what we need to be, what we must become now for your soon coming kingdom, or even before death comes. So please, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the Holy Spirit arrest our attention and guide it to all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when you, talk about, when you talk about the midnight cry, now, what I'd like to do, if, if, if you guys can take your phones off mute and you can keep the noise to, to a very minimum that won't pick it up, because I like, this is a conversation within that. We need to, this is a dialogue conversation. All our conversations are dialogue, Bible studies. So brothers and sisters, when you, when you think about the midnight crowd, what comes to your mind? We're going to deal with the physical and the spiritual, or the natural and the spiritual, amen? We're going to go to the natural first, then we're going to go to the spiritual first, amen? So, brother and sister, when you think about the midnight crowd, what comes to your mind? The last warning message for the, for the whole world. Okay, okay, amen. Anyone else? Midnight cry. Now, that means you're going to be crying at midnight when Santa Claus ain't coming? No. That, ain't what <laughs> no. that means you're going to be crying at midnight because you got left and, 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 and outside and you went somewhere and you couldn't get home? No, no, no. Not none of those. The midnight cry. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to look at a little history. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of right in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, where we're sleeping so good and so hard. Mm. And, 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 and uh, somebody comes to us to wake us up sometimes. We'll, we'll even fight. You know, don't wake me up. I'm sleeping now. You know, and because and, uh, there's something special about, about sleeping. Mm. And, and nobody else can experience that for us. Mm. But it's a person to be able to sleep. And, and we don't want to be getting up. That, that's the key. We don't want to be getting up, but then there was a cry made. Wow. Uh, mm. Anyway, that's it. That's it. That's not. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, we said we're going to talk about the natural midnight cry. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to talk about the spiritual. We're going. To, we're going. To, we're going. To, we're going. To, please, I'm going to pause for thirty seconds. So you have time to get some pen and paper. Uh, and then 
we're going to we're going to pursue more. Pause yeah. for a few seconds. Get you you time to get some pen and paper. And while you getting pen and paper, let's turn to Exodus chapter twelve. Exodus chapter twelve. Exodus chapter twelve. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 12. Okay. All right. 30 seconds is a long time. I, do I, if everyone has the pen and paper ready, amen? Amen. amen. Or you may not need pen and paper. You may think you got, you know, you may believe that you got a good memory. And you, if you do, praise be to God. Hey, hey, but, hey, whatever it takes. If you remember God's word. All right. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Are we there? Amen. 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 And the law, and the law spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, "Who, who spoke unto Moses and Aaron?" The Lord. The Lord. So when we read the spirit of problems, if he said, "The Lord showed me," that's what she means. Praise God. And I don't know how we can decipher that. That's what she's saying versus what God is saying. Verse two. This month. Unto you, the beginning of months, it the first yeah. month of the year to you. What month is that? April. April. So actually, our new year, we believe in Jesus, whose whose ways are the way of the uh, sanctuary, who's also, you know, uh, you know. Now that now that I'm saying this, so since we believe in the sanctuary service, I will actually those who believe in the sanctuary service, New Year begins April. You know that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now we live in, you know, we're captive in this United States world. When I say captive, you're not really, you know, you know what I'm saying. We're here in this United States, so we know that our year begins January. So you using the European system for the Gregorian calendar, you can't understand the sanctuary service by using the calendar. Amen. Lights, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to use a calendar from the Bible. All right. Speak unto you, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of fathers, a lamb for a house. How many for one house? Yeah, one man. Now, I'm going to show you how mercy God is, brothers and sisters. And if the household, if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. What God is saying there. If you, if you, it's too small, just go with your neighbor. Your lamb shall be without blemish. But this is why the lamb got to be without blemish. What is the significance of that? Now we're gonna walk this thing out, brother and sister. We're not gonna rush. We're not gonna every spirit of prophecy quote I got by God's grace. I'm gonna read it, and every scripture that I got by God's grace, I'm gonna read it. This is how important this subject is, brother. When it comes to midnight cry. Oh, I got somebody coming in. For those who are coming in, the subject is called the midnight cry, and uh, we in Exodus chapter twenty, verse Exodus chapter twelve, Exodus twelve. Uh, verse verse five, Exodus twelve five. We we'll get opportunity to get there. A few seconds. So, brother and sister, we're asking in verse five. What is it? What's the significance of the lamb being without blemish to, to us? Well, whenever you do. say again. Well, well, we know that in the, in the Old Testament, the, the sacrifice before God needed to be without blemish. That was kind of like a, a you can call it a foretelling of what had to be done with Jesus because Jesus was without sin. So when you make a sacrifice to the gods, you know, it had to be without um, without blemish during those particular times. It's like no defect. Brother Ken, I was asking the Lord right when you before you spoke, Lord, do I need to go here? And your word made us need to go here. Uh oh, was that was that way off? <laughs> no, no, no. You was you said one thing that made me go to the scripture. When you said the Old Testament, 
And the Lord said, now you got to go to the New Testament. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. No, no, you, everything you said was correct. But when you said, oh, I said, I need to make sure that we cover also that what's in the New Testament stays the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Romans 12. 1. Amen? Amen. I just want to give the rest of the story, Brother Ken. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you was on point. Okay. Romans 12, when you get that, say amen. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not one of these scriptures, but when the Lord leads you, you have to go that way. Amen. Because when you give a Bible study, but so you don't know, you never know what somebody gonna ask you. You never know what someone's gonna say that the Lord wanna have God you and direct you where you need to go so you can make a more complete picture of what God is trying to show us. Amen. And this scripture is very neat, needful as well. Yeah. Romans 12, 1. When you get that, say amen. <laughs> Now, brothers and sisters, I am not hungry. I did not eat breakfast. And I did not eat dinner last night. I am well fed. Praise God. Wow. So what I'm saying to you, I'm not comparing you to me. So if I'm not hungry and you ate, I don't think you should be hungry. So if we turn a long time around the altar today, and if we come back a little early, would you please bear with us a little longer? Amen. Because this, this is important. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you. I'm, I, I, when I'm, I'm presenting the law, when I get to that testimony, it's going to be so clear. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, this subject is, I, you know, I, like I said, I did a study on this previously, long, long time ago. But every time you do a study on something, God takes you much deeper, much deeper, much deeper. And I, and I, and I see the significance of why this subject should be taught right now. They can't be, I was going to wait until, until my return, but the Lord, no, 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 no waiting, no waiting. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living yeah. sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, your reasonable service. So if you present your body before God, Holy, then you must have, you, you can't have what? Blemish. No blemish. Amen. No sin. A living, a, 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 what do you say? A, when it's when it, when it sacrifice, you know, you know, uh, I never asked this question. Let me ask this question. Brothers and sisters, why they couldn't burn a dead sacrifice? They, 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 after all, they killed him, right? Mm -hmm. But why they couldn't bring a dead sacrifice? Not, not, I mean, just because God told them to bring a living, that's good enough. But what, yes, you so. think, what would you think the reasoning God did not want them to bring a dead sacrifice? Be never asked that question before. The question never came to my mind before. Because he was dead and. No. Why did he want it to, to be dead? Why did, say, why did God why did God not why God wanted you to bring a living sacrifice and not bring a dead sacrifice? Why? Well, hold on, hold on, brother, brother Walter. Uh, brother Walter, is that you? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother Walter. Say it again, brother Walter. I don't think they heard you. Blood has to be shed. Blood had to be shed right Blood before to, be shed. to the priest. Did and so that life, and so in other words, that dead sacrifice could have died of itself, right? And it could have had all kinds of diseases. No, 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 yeah. no, no. That sacrifice, do you not know? Thank you, Brother Walter, praise God. Do you know the living sacrifice that you had to bring? That the, and let's go back to, uh, let's go back to uh, 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 Exodus 12. So that living sacrifice, it had to be examined, brother and sister. Now you have to, now listen. Now listen, you got to examine, you have to, you had to examine that sacrifice before you bring it to God and make sure it was susceptible to God. Amen, lights. Amen. You don't hear me. You had to examine that sacrifice before you bring it to God. What the Bible tells us? Examine yourself daily whether you be in the faith or not. We had to examine ourselves. We had to take uh, account of ourselves. We had to measure ourselves by, by not each other, but by the standard of God. By the law of God, we need to measure ourselves daily, moment by moment. 
Lord, am I walking in the grace of Jesus Christ today? Examine. So you had to examine that living sacrifice, brothers and sisters, before you offered to God, before you offered to the priest, before you offered to the high priest, brothers and sisters. So therefore, we should examine ourselves with our spotted blemish to make sure that, Lord, when I come to you, ask you for something, I present myself before you to be a prayer to be answered, I must be clean without sin. Y'all quiet today. Praise God. But I, want to say, I, 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 cannot, I cannot imagine, I cannot even stress the importance of us understanding the midnight cry. I'm telling you, brothers, we're going somewhere with this, but we're going somewhere. Go ahead. I see the hand. Go ahead. You know, it was like you were saying yesterday, is that how can you, how can you get a prayer and you pray for someone when you are the order? Hmm. You don't have yourself in order. Right. I said that. Hmm? I, I said that. Somebody else said that. If we was we was talking about it yesterday, you know, uh, about you know praying for no, it's true, man. What you, what you said is true. I, I mean, I mean, I, what you're saying is true. I'm not disagreeing with you saying. Cause I guess sometimes I say too much. I don't know what I say, but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's true statement. But that's a true statement. That's a true well, statement. Well, you know, I like when you brought out that part about how Brother Walter said that how you can't bring an animal that's dead because some blood has to be shed. It's an act of obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it says obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so. So that blood washes us, amen. 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 And Brother MK. Yes, ma'am. Is, is there a correlation there just in terms of God's government and that God doesn't force us to do anything? In other words, the fact that living versus dead, living requires a choice, mm -hmm. you know, versus someone dead knows nothing. But yeah, and, God doesn't you know, force us to do anything. Right. And dead was quite a choice too. That you know, if you don't want to, if you don't, and, we, and Brother Wayne made sure we understood this last night, dead man walking. In other words, that you're not literally dead and walking around like you like you just died and rose out the grave. That means mm -hmm. that you're spiritually dead. That's and right. so Amen. and so and that's why Second Corinthians 13, 5 states, examine yourselves whether you've been in faith, prove your own selves. Know you not that your own selves. That how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. What verse? Right. Second Corinthians thirteen five. So, brothers, okay. as we go back to uh, as we go back to uh, Exodus thirteen, Exodus twelve, he said, "The lamb shall be without blemish, mm -hmm. a male of the first year. You you should take all from the sheep or from the goat." I would expound on why he said male, but I. I I, I'm afraid you may miss it. And I don't know if I should. Y'all, do, do I need to ex expound on that? Nah, no, y'all y'all get it. Go ahead. Yes. Brothers and sisters. Now, let me ask the question. Why do you believe that God said male a male, not a female? I believe that because the male carry the seeds of life, that's what I believe because the male carries the seed. What do you mean by that? It can't be another one if the male didn't have a seed, another one, a seed. So. Mm. I'm lacking understanding what you're trying to say. Can you clear that? Can you make it plainer? Okay. A male can make another one like him. It'd be another, another a male can. Huh? You well, said God male? can, but the male carried it, but God gave him to reproduce. So, so you know, with the reproduction, with the reproduction uh, organs in the female more than the male, right? I think X and Y. Yeah, right. I, I get but them the X saying, but the male and Y. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm saying X and Y chromosome with a scientific right. method. But mm -hmm. so what? So God ordained that the, the, the male, the first year, the male, yeah. 
Because God yeah. said the mail is the blessing came through with the mail, right? Yes. I, I am tempted to say something, but I don't know if I'm saying it to the Lord when we say it. So, brothers and sisters, I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> when we I tell you, let me say it this way. When we when you come to the sanctuary service, brothers and sisters, find out. When you come to the sanctuary service, brothers and sisters, look at who is officiated in the sanctuary service. Look what is given in the sanctuary service, who is offered, what is offered, not a female, but a male. And also a female, female lamb could be pregnant. You know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God, so the male, we know the male cannot, amen, Holy Spirit. The male cannot be with male, cannot be with a male, female cannot be with female. And so right. therefore, brothers and sisters, you know he, she is he, and he and she and she. God made man, God made female. So God, the God said that the male should be what? The first person to right? The head, right? Yes. And so when you look at the sanctuary service, do you not know that there's no female ever minister to the sanctuary service, ever through the word of God, ever? Mm. Wow. Do you not know that there's no, there's no female offering broad, broad to the sanctuary service? Did you know that? Uh -huh. That's right. Because of the order. That was an object lesson for us. But because we want to please each other and we're not men in our own home, so we're not men in the church, so we have all <laughs> these other custom things that goes on in our church that, that's not that's so. Right. I, and, I leave, and I think y'all get what I'm saying. From a, 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 what I'm saying. So, brothers and sisters, and so Verse 6, Exodus 12, 6. Exodus 12, 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike, verse 7, uh, Exodus chapter uh, 12, and they shall take of the blood and strike on the door, on the two doorposts, on the two side posts, and on the upper doorposts of the house, houses, Wherein they shall eat it. So every house had to have blood where at? The doorposts. Okay. On, which, on, how many, on what, how many doorposts? Two. Two side Two posts. Right. And, and where and where else else? The top. On the top. Amen. On the top. Amen. Amen. The reason for that on the doorposts and on the top. Verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter, they shall eat it. Eat it, eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast fire his head and his, with his legs and with the purchases thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Brothers and sisters, why did God say don't eat unleavened bread? Why did, say, why did God say don't eat leavened bread but unleavened bread? What's the difference between leavened bread and unleavened bread? Unleavened bread um, will not rise. Leavened bread rises. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, do you know Christ fulfilled that part of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, feast, unleavened feast? Amen. How did Christ fulfill the feast of unleavened bread? Because brothers and sisters, by his death and resurrection, that's how he put, that's how he waited what? Three days before he rose. And when he rose, he fulfilled the feast of unleavened bread. Praise Christ God. is what? Christ is what? The bread of what? Right. right. And you'll see, you look, and I want you to look at the days, brothers. I want you to look at the days and you'll see here. Brother MK, can you clarify? Yeah. You are is the is the lesson there that because Christ waited, there was a less that there was an object lesson there. The object lesson of the feast of unleavened bread. Yes, he okay. fulfilled that. Christ fulfilled every feast days in in in, in, the, in by his death and resurrection. Amen. 
And you shall let nothing, verse 10, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remained of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, your lawns good with your shoes on your feet. That is serious. Now, oh, let, me, let, me, let me read on, then I actually, I'll come back. And your staff in your hand, and you shall eat in haste. It, the Lord's passed over. Why they had to have shoes on, brothers and sisters? Why did they have to have their shoes on when they ate it? And then she was on the name. Oh, I'm. Oh, somebody got something? Was it holy? <laughs> you better believe it, brother. That's where I'm going. That's where I am right now. <laughs> you better believe it. In other words, they had to be ready. Sister uh, Mary, you got a hand? You got something to say? Feet privilege. No, I was thinking about uh, washing other feet. Okay. So, so here, brothers and sisters. That they were supposed to eat the Passover, and they're supposed to have what? The staff in their hand, the shoes on, and be ready to go. When the angel come, and the angel come, and, and death angel pass, and it goes to the Egyptian and kill and, and kill the firstborn, that the, that, the, that, that the blood's not over the doorpost, Pharaoh's going to say, get out. And you ain't got time to put the shoes on. You got to be ready. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're ready to go. Got to have the staff in your hand and your shoes on your feet. When Jesus comes, brother, you got to have the shoes on your feet. And not the literary shoes, but you gotta have the physical, you gotta have the spiritual shoes. You got your feet in Romans. Matter of fact, go to Romans 10 15 real quickly. Amen. Romans 10 15. Amen. And also while we're turning there, Brother MK, I see a correlation with that doorpost. The the if you liken a doorpost. I have to say the post, but the door frame to the to to a man in terms of our stature, the arms, the sides of the side posts represent man's, you know, it said the mark of the beast in their foreheads and in their hands. Right. Um, if you think about the seal of God, those side posts represent our hands and that that upper post, the the head, the you know the mind again that just thought that thought occurred to me as we were reading well let me let me go back why y'all trying to romans 10 10 but i'll go back and elaborate on that now brothers and sisters around the around the before the mercy seat stands what hmm? the ten commandments okay but okay what what okay right but what's outside? Of, what what's what's outside of the mercy seat? Oh, the oh, the mercy seat. What what is what is taking place in the most holy place? There's two angels, brothers and sisters, two cherubims. Their faces touching towards each other, and their wings and their feet covers the most the uh, the, the ten commandments. Amen. And above above them is the what? It's a it's a father, right? Praise God. And so now, how many, when Jesus was in the, when Jesus was in the uh, 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 wilderness being tempted, how many angels came to him? Three? Two. Two angels came and ministered to him. Two. Two. When the angels came down to Sodom and Gomorrah, how many angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah? Two. 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 So the brother, those two doorposts mean you're protected. As long as you have the blood of Christ, God has your God has your protection. Amen. Praise God. And, 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 and over the door is your name written, Father, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Sabbath, our Father. Hallelujah. That's the gospel, brother and sister. God, God, Amen. everything God does is for a particular reason for us to understand more of the plan of salvation. Amen. That's all I'm about. Make your feet be carried. So where are we going? Romans 10 what? 15. 15. What does it say? Thou shall they preach, except they be sent 
as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good days. Amen. Now I'll go, let's go to Ephesians 6, 6, 15. Amen. Ephesians 6, 15. So a lot of these, it sounds like are object lessons God is using. To teach us the, 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 the plan of salvation. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 15. Yeah. But so we're going to take our time with this. We're going to take our time with this. Ephesians, are, are we there? Amen. All right. It says in what? This is when Brother uh, Wayne was referring to. What it says? Your feet shod. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So if, you, if your feet Already shot for the preparation, that means you're ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah. You're prepared. And, you're ready. And, and you notice, know brother. You know, you know, you know what? And, and I know when I was coming up, and my uncle used to come and give me some time on his way from work. And he said, Get him, put your shoes on. Now, I, I know what he meant. When I put my shoes, I got to put my clothes on too. Yeah. It doesn't stand. So, so, so when they said, Put your shoes on, that means you're ready to go. And your feet just carry be waiting, you. Be waiting for me. Yeah. Put your shoes on. So, brother, see that we need to add, that we need to have this gospel peace ready with us when Christ comes. We need to be ready. Yeah, amen. Brother, brother Roy amen. had a comment. Go ahead, brother Roy. No, I was just saying the distinction and the parallel with the feet is the feet carry you to the place right. it does. It carries you onward. Amen. 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 All right, verse twelve. Let's go. Uh, Exodus twelve, twelve. Amen. 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 So as we get as we get further, further on, we're gonna get it's gonna get better and better and better. So, I'm gonna use this word that nobody likes using. It's gonna get good and good and good. <laughs> Amen. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Exodus 12, 12 says. Are we all there, brothers and sisters? Amen. So I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I, the Lord, sound like the sound like the second coming of Christ, doesn't it? Sound yeah, like, amen. And also, too, because He takes judgment, right? Yeah, right. So if you're not, if we're not covered by the blood of Jesus, judgment falls upon us. And all those false, you see, what, you see what it say? All those gods with a small G. Mm -hmm. so all those false gods we have, we worshiping, we're gonna die right along with them. Christ comes back. Right. Like we, 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 we have not made a, a sacrifice, a living sacrifice with Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. And, and the blood shall be to you for a token of what? Verse 13. A blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses, houses where ye now, brothers and sisters, he, God used the word houses. He used the word house could mean everyone, right? But he were houses. Because each one of us are what? A house. Yeah. Yeah. Each one yeah. of us are a temple. Hallelujah. Amen. We are all yeah. temples, brothers and sisters. Which temple are ye? The Bible says. Yeah. And when and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be come upon you, come upon you to destroy when I smite the land of Egypt. Brother and sister, this is a direct correlation of the last seven plagues. And Jesus says. When, he, when Jesus come back, if you don't see the Father's name in our foreheads, mm -hmm. our Father the Sabbath, then we will be destroyed, brothers and sisters. Amen. If the blood of Jesus Christ haven't covered us mm -hmm. and protected us, the destroying angel will come back and, and Daniel 9, the last thing that Daniel 9, I think it's verse 13, not, the last verse in Daniel chapter 9, the angel said, Tell God, you tell Jesus, I have commanded as I have done as thou hast commanded. Amen. The angels, brothers, sisters, the angels that are that that have not left that first estate, they are doing all the bidding that God asked them to do with, with terrible excitement. And brother MK, I just keep seeing more and more parallels when it says who will be able to stand. 
him with him that has clean hands and a pure heart again just sort of symbolic of that our hands and our forehead and thank you sister. let me say when i was i was smite the land of egypt this world is egypt brother and sister philip paul's gods is it not amen come out of egypt come out of babylon this world is babylon amen Mother Harless, the Catholic Church is Babylon, the Mother Harless. This world is a type of Babylon, type of Sodom and Gomorrah, type of, uh, of last day, this, uh, and Noah's day. You want to get out of this world alive, brother and sister, you got to have the angels protecting you, and you got to have the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit inside of you and, and marked on your forehead. And listen, now the, the, the mark of the beast is in their what? Forehead and their hand. But the mark of God is only where? In the forehead. What's the mark of God in where? Because of what? Because brothers and sisters, we believe by faith, amen. And the mark of the beast is in our forehead and our hands because they want to work out their own salvation and they're going to be lost. They want to think the way they want to think and they want to do what they want to do. Our, our mark that God gave us is still of God. We are doing what God asks us to do. So we're thinking as we, the mind that is in Christ also is in us. Amen. So it's not our mind that is Christ's mind in us that we are being obedient. Praise you God. Hear me. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's the God. gospel, brothers. That's the gospel. That so any other message, I, I don't let me I give me this question. Any other message that we are preaching other than present truth and repairing the people and telling the people, listen, we need to put away sin now. We need to put away all sin now. We need to be preaching present truth. Daniel Revelation, she, she said the Bible teaches and, and Reve Revelation says it and, and the Spirit of Prophecy says it, that Daniel and Revelation should live in the church. It should live in your home, should live in your lives. That's the message for the time that Christ we're living in is to prepare people to receive God as a friend and not as an enemy. Amen. 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 And this is what Jesus says, verse 14. I'm almost coming to a close in verse 18, but we're going to move on somewhere else in a minute. And this day, verse 14, Revelation uh, uh, 12, uh, uh, 14, and this day shall be unto you for memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall keep it a feast by our ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye, ye even the first day ye shall be put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from all, from all Israel. Brothers and sisters, how many days? Seven. Seven. All right. When did Christ get baptized? Seventy. Thirty. Thirty-one. Eighty. What? What was it? When did he get? When did he get baptized? Uh, oh no, twenty-seven eighty. Twenty-seven eighty. Amen. And so. And he was cut off when? In the midst of what? 31 AD. And then what happened three and a half years later? He stood up on the right hand of God. But what happened uh, though? Probation ended. What happened? Probation ended. Probation ended for who? Hmm. Because they refused to recognize the unleavened bread of Jesus. They refused to accept the Christ was the bread of life. Mm. And they, they had seven years, brother. So God said, you got seven days to make sure you don't eat no leaven bread. I see him, Brother King. And so they accept the sacrifice. Everything pointed to Jesus. The every feast day sacrificial system pointed to Christ, brother and sister. Go ahead, Brother King. Brother King, I thought you had something to say. He's muted. You're muted. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a question that I have because I, it's come up in my mind a, a couple of times. Um, 
in the past, even recently. Well, in, in verse 14, it says, we're talking about um, the Passover. Yes, sir. And, and, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Right. Now, since it says forever right here, is this particular feast, um, is it washed? I mean, is, is it also... Um, you know, I, we know that we know that the sacrificial ones were but, uh, when, when Jesus, you know, when Jesus paid the ultimate the price. So, is this Passover feast? Is it when it says forever? We we, we don't have to keep this one anymore. Right now, we're going. Let's let's go to uh, First Corinthians five seven. You remember in in the book of Samuel we read last. I don't, I don't know. Was it? No, it might have been the other day. No. I, it might have been when I was at church last time. But anyway, we talked about Hannah gave to uh, gave uh, Samuel. His mother gave Samuel to the Lord, and he said he should be. He should. She led him to the Lord forever. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Hold your hand. Let, let's go to Samuel chapter one. Let's go to Samuel chapter one. Let's go to Samuel chapter one before we go to Corinthians. Samuel what? First Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel, yeah. First Samuel 1. First Samuel 1. First Samuel 1. First Samuel 1. Let him to the Lord. Maybe in verse 2. Maybe verse 2. Let's see. Uh, one second. I'm trying to find what what she said. Um, was she say that Hannah led him to the Lord forever? One second. So look verse, at, verse what? It says in verse 11, I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Yeah, it also is the place that she said forever too. Right. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, uh, first Samuel 128. First Samuel 128. Thank amen. you. When you get that, say amen. 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 All right. Can someone read that? Yeah, I'll read it. Then okay. Also, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. So he said, as long as he what? Live. 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 All right. So you see, as long as he lived, it's forever. Right? Right. So go to 1 Corinthians 5 7. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. You get that? Can somebody read that? I read. Amen. We all that, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are in leaven. For you, even Christ, our pass, Passover is sacrificed for us. So, who is that Passover? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Right. So, so we don't have to worship. We don't have to do observe the what? Passover. Passover. So therefore, 
because the blood of Christ is our Passover. Christ is Amen. our Passover. That's right. When he shed blood that Amen. 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 Thank you for that question. But some people still keep those feast days, those those those, those uh uh those uh ceremonial. Um, what do you call them? Ceremonial. Yeah, but the group of people. Um the Jews. Hebrew Israelites. If Hebrew is like they still keep the Passover yeah. and stuff like that. But now, now remember now, we said in the past, I'm not we, I said in the past. I said in the past, brothers and sisters, that if you're gonna keep the Passover, you must get a lamb without blemish, without spot. That's right. But guess what else you gotta do? You gotta you gotta build a sanctuary service all over again. Do it all over. And guess what else you gotta do? <laughs> And you gotta ordain some priests and high priests. And guess what else you gotta do? You gotta have all the articles that's in the, in the outer court, most holy place, and the holy place, and most holy place. And guess what else you gotta do? Which if you can do all that, this is gonna be impossible for you to do the last thing. You're gonna have to bring God down and put him back in that, that sanctuary service that you that you built, and I'll bring all the Ten Commandments and the Aaron and Roger, but you gotta do all that before you observe the Passover. Again. And you got to do it on the day that God said do it on. So now that that's, that's not happening. You may build your sanctuary that, that look like the one on earth, but it's not holy, nor is it ordained, nor is it a uh, uh, design of God. Amen? Amen. So you just can't say you observe the Passover without, without actually following all the rites of the Passover. Now you see why it's impossible for us to observe the Passover in its physical contents. And not and, and 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 instead of doing it in the spiritual, mm -hmm. amen. amen, amen, amen. So when people think about doing these Passover, they got to build them a whole sanctuary, <laughs> and they got to find a scapegoat. Right, but they need to find save save right that way and put them on that one. All right, amen. let's go back to Exodus twelve. Amen. Any more questions on that? All right, seven, verse 15. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even at the first day, you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eat leavened bread from that first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now, you, brothers, you, do you know what cut off means? Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Eat, eat them with eleven bread. Now, you know, the, the, the priest, the, 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 the the Catholic Church, you know, they eat unleavened bread for those seven days. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. They want to do everything except the seven day Sabbath. It's an interesting, isn't it? Here he is. And in the first, first six days, and in the first day, and holy convocation, and in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. Save which every man must eat that only may be done to of you. And ye shall and ye shall observe unleavened bread, for in the self same day I have brought you, brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore ye shall observe this day in your congregation by the orders of ever. Verse 18. In the first, on the 14th day of the month, at evening ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twenty day of the month at evening. Amen. Amen. So let me let me see let me see. Let's get down to uh, someone keep reading. Well, someone read all the way down to twenty seven. Then I'll pick it back up. Verse twenty to twenty seven. Verse nineteen. I mean. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye be eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Verse 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip in the blood that in the basin 
and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the mm. Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel <clears throat> and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite. And he shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? Verse 27, that ye shall say, it the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshiped. Amen. All right. So brothers and sisters, we see that if we don't have the blood of Christ, then when Christ come back, we're gonna be what? We're gonna be, we're gonna be lost just like the world. Amen. He said he'll make the, he didn't, he didn't make no distinction between stranger or born. If you don't do what God said do, whether you're stranger or whether you're born uh, unto whatever, you're not gonna make it. Amen. Amen. And the children of Israel, verse 28, went away and did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight, when? Midnight. The Lord, the Lord smoked all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh set that sat on the throne unto the firstborn of the captive that in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle. So at midnight, brothers and sisters, God came to do what? Kill. Kill. Because yeah. they execute judgment, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, there is a physical midnight and there's a spiritual midnight. Let, let's continue to talk about the, the physical midnight. Then we're going to transition to the spiritual midnight in a minute. So let us go to any questions on that. So we must have the blood of Jesus before midnight come, brothers and sisters. Amen. When is midnight? Oh, God. Amen. Brother MK. Let's, yes, ma'am. Why does it in verse 27, why does it refer to it as a, the, the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover? Because this is, it is a sacrifice. Because the blood is blood is being shed. That's right. Okay. Because the, for the animal that was killed was a sacrifice. Remember they had to bring a sacrifice without blemish? Okay, praise God. Thank and you. it's not the sacrifice of Moses. Or Aaron is the sacrifice of who? Of the Lord, which is a typical sacrifice, which is a typical antitype to me type, a type me antitype, I should say, of the sacrifice God Jesus gave when he shed his blood in uh, Isaiah 53. He brought his lamb to the slaughter. Amen. And he shed the blood on Calvary Cross, on Calvary Hill, on the cross. Let's go to Job 34. Job 34, 10 through 34. Job 34. What book? Job 34, 10 through 34. Amen. I'm, I'm just going to read Job 34. Uh, 10 through 20. Wow. Well, you know what? I got to read the whole thing. Because, <laughs> all right. Job 10. Job 34, 10 through 34. <laughs> What book? Job 34, <laughs> 10 through 34. Okay. Are we there? Amen. 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 I try to cut my comments short. Therefore, hearken to me, ye men of understanding. Far, far be it from God, wickedness, and the almighty iniquity. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to ways. 
Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty prevent, pervert judgment. Who have given him a charge over the earth, or who have disposed the whole earth? The whole world, I mean. If he set his heart upon man, he gathered unto himself the spirit and his breath. All flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again into the dust. And when you say all, they don't, does it really mean all brothers and sisters or just this majority? Majority. If now, un, verse 16, if now understand, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hated right govern, or will thou condemn him that is most just? See, he just said, oh, then he, then he asked God, okay, Lord, would you really destroy the just? Remember Abraham said that to Jesus? So, Lord, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Right. Daniel, Ezekiel said that, Lord, would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Are we not saying that, Lord, are we, would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? The Lord said, if you have the blood on your doorpost and on your forehead, I would not do it. Amen. First uh, 18. To say to a king, wicked, to princes, ungodly, that accepted not the persons of princes, nor regarded the rich more than the poor, but they are all the work of his hand. In a moment they shall die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight. Midnight. Amen. And pass away. And the mighty shall be taken with, away without hand. <laughs> In other words, they not God's going to destroy them, but not not <laughs> man. God will destroy the wicked. Amen. Amen. For his eyes upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. No darkness, nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Hmm. For he will not lay upon man more that he should enter into judgment of God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works. He overturned it in the night so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. The way of the Lord is where? In the sanctuary. Some right. seven, they away. Some seven, seven, thirteen, I think. They, their way, O Lord, in the sanctuary. And in the same word, the ten, it's in the Ten Commandments, is not. Amen. And, and, and Amen. in the midst of the Ten Commandments is the Sabbath, seven day Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Amen. Too wide to get around it, too tall to get over it, too low to get under it. You just got to go through, through the door. All right, come on. He scragged, verse 26, he scragged them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways, as we read earlier, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heard the cry of the afflicted. Of the afflicted. Mm -hmm. When he give, when he give it quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hide his face, who then can behold him? Whether against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne, I will not offend, I see not teach without me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. According to thy hand, he will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I, therefore speak what thou knowest. Let the men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, now let us go. Any questions on that? Now we're going to the spiritual midnight. Let's turn to Matthew 25. What book? Matthew 25. Verse 1 through 13. What verse did we stop in? 34. Okay. What was it? I think we're going to read this. And then we're going to pause because and then we're going to come back early so we can finish. We got a lot more to go, brother and sister. Well, I mean, can we come back? What time? So what time we send? What time we supposed to come back at 4 30? 4 30. We come back at 4 30. 4 30. 4 30. Can we come back at 3 30? Yeah. 
I can't speak for everyone. Amen. Amen. So at 3 30, for those who can please be back by God's grace. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue. We're gonna but we're gonna read uh we're gonna read uh, Matthew 25 and then we're gonna pause and then we're gonna break for a couple hours and come back about 3 30, brothers and sisters. Because I want to I want us I want us to finish this day, amen. 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 Matthew 25. One through thirteen. One through thirteen. Are we there? Amen. In the spiritual aspect of an M. And when I say spiritual, I mean there's going to be a literal cry, a midnight cry, and it's going to be a physical. Well, we'll I, I'll let this get there. Then shall the king of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which mm -hmm. took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five foolish. <laughs> they that foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. While the bridegroom turbid, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, when? At midnight. That was the cry made, the midnight cry. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bridegroom coming, go you out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Brother said, you gotta understand something. These virgins are not hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Where do you find virgins at? Mm -hmm. In the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then all those virgins arose and trim their lamps. And the food is said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Wow. The hypocrite is not saying he got the Holy Spirit unless he's drunk. He <laughs> said. But if he's not drunk, he's not saying that. He's saying that. And um, let, me read, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me read verse seven again. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the food is said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are going out. Nope. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, oh, let me, let me. The lamp is what? What is the lamp? The light. No, no. What's the lamp? What is the light? What is the light? Like? The word of God. The word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, how is it? Let me, let, me, let, me read, let me read this. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Mm -hmm. So how is it, and we're going to look at this later on, how is it that you have the word of God but don't have the Holy Spirit? Milo. Can't do it. Can't do it. Mm -mm. But the foolish but said, give us your oil, for our lamps. And the oil represents what? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit. But the wise answered verse 9 and said, not so. answer saying, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them to sell and to buy for yourself. Okay. And while the, listen, if you buy and sell it, you, 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 you gonna receive the what? Uh -oh, the market, the market of beast on you. No, I'm saying if you buy and sell it, you're not gonna receive what? The market of beast. No. If you buy and sell it, you say buy and sell. Oh, buy and sell. <laughs> You're not going to receive what? Yeah. Ken, what you say? Well, if you're buying or selling in, in the end times, that means you're not with God. That's right. You're not with God. You're not, you have not received the seal of God. Thank you, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Mm. Brother and sister, you know, we're going we're gonna to look at this this afternoon. You know, in the Eastern weddings, the, the expectation was for, for the bridegroom, not the bride. The, again, we, we lack a lot of understanding because we set these things up in the world as those that the church is. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, the bridegroom, everybody was expecting the bridegroom, not the bride. The, bride. the bridegroom was waiting for the bride. The bridegroom took the bride to this house where the ceremony was taking place and everybody was waiting for the bridegroom to come and the virgins was waiting with their lamps, waiting for the marriage procession to come. And while the marriage procession is about to come, 
they all rose and they all, remember, they all slept. They was all sleeping. It was just in the wise, it was not just the foolish that was sleeping, the wise were sleeping too. But when the cry was made, when the loud, the midnight cry was made, they all woke, they all woke up. And that midnight cry, brother, sister, is a time of trouble when it hits. We, the church, must wake up, must not be asleep. Amen. So those who was those who did, was not prepared for Christ to come, now let me pause here for a second. Now I'm gonna go back to matter of fact, you know what? If I all right, let me pause. Let me, all right, let me pause here for a second. In 1844, 1833, William Miller began to preach about the second coming of Christ. The loud cry was given. Christ is what? The midnight cry. Christ is coming, right? Prepare the meeting. Brothers and sisters, People from all different churches left their denomination and came to that movement, which was called the Middle Right Movement. Amen? Amen. Some only came because they were afraid of being lost. And many gave up their land and houses and, 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 and sick and caused their affection to join that movement. Some came just to see whether it's true or not. But there were some who came sincerely expecting the Lord to come because the midnight cry was given. So around when the, and so they refigurated and say, well, not the 1843, the 1844, the autumn of 1844. So on October the 22nd, 1844, they expected the Lord to come. So at midnight, Just imagine, now this was done all over the United States pretty much. Canada, uh, Ithia, New York, I-T-H-C-A, I think of New York, upper New York, different parts of the world, country. People were preparing for Christ to come. The midnight cry was given, brothers and sisters. Go out to meet the bridegroom. The door is shut. Matter of fact, let me read this part. Verse 11. And I'm going to pick that up. But I'm going to pick back up. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. And the people were telling people, you know, if you don't come to this movement, the door is going to be shut, and it's going to be too late. Now, just imagine if you were doing a day and time, brothers and sisters, what might have been in your thoughts? Say, you know what? I don't really believe it, but just in case, I got to go join the movement. And they gave up their land and houses and whatever else they had because they really believed that Christ was going to come. Like I said, some didn't believe it. Some just didn't want to be lost. Now, brother, you serving God because you don't be lost, then you may, just, you may very well be lost. That's right. Amen. We got to serve God because we love him. Amen. Amen. Because he first loved us. That's right, man. Hand, sister. And we got, and first of all, we got to believe the message that God's word is not slack concerning his promise that some man can't slack us, but it's long suffering that none should what? That none should perish, but yeah. all should come to right. repentance. Sister Amen. Michelle, go ahead. No, I just wanted to make sure I understand the after, when the midnight cry goes out, it's not too late to, to turn and to. It, but the ex, ex the Lord, the Lord executes His judgment um, at midnight. I guess I'm just trying to understand in terms of time sequence. Well, you know what? Interesting. Interesting. You know what? I have something to read. I'm glad you brought that up. Lord, always so good, isn't He? Amen. Amen. Let me find this really quick. Two things I'm going to read. This come out of the uh, great controversy. Um, 
the scriptures that safeguard. Then I'm going to read some from Marana. Let me, let me read some from early writings first. And then I'll come back. All right? Page yeah. 75, uh, early writings, gathering time. All right. Here it is. Answer to your question, Michelle. Page 75, paragraph one, early writings. The Lord, who? The Lord. Lord. The Lord has shown me, this is the prophecy. The Lord has shown me that the message of the third angel must go and be proclaimed to the scattered truth of the Lord, but it must not be hung on time. I saw that some were getting a false excitement arising from preaching time, but the third angel's message is stronger than time can be. I saw that this message can stand on its own foundation and needs not time to strengthen it and that it will go in mighty power and do his work and will be cut short in righteousness. Early writing seven, page 75, paragraph one. Why am I saying, why am I reading, why did I read that? Because it will be some people, as was also the foolish version that, didn't, that did not have the Holy Spirit. They waited too late. If you do not have the Holy Spirit before the loud cry, you're going to be too late. Amen. If you not cry, you're going to be too late. Because what happened? What happened? The midnight cry came, Michelle, sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters. They did what? Trim their lamp. They went out. They went out, right? Went out, brother Wayne. They went out to lead Right, and the, and those who did not have enough oil, which represents the Holy Spirit, did what? Asked for to borrow they, oil. They wanted to look for more, right? Sure. In other words, they were trying to get ready. Trying to, too late. Hold your, hold your hand there, Matthew 25, and, and go to Revelation 22. Yeah. Can I say something? Yes, sir, but by, by all means. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, see, see what, at the time of this midnight cry, or the midnight cry, it seems to, to, I hope this is the right word, it seems to conjoin the, the end of the 2300-day prophecy, 1844, mm -hmm. it, where, where, where the temple of God in heaven was, was open. Yes. The door was open. Yes. And where Christ moved to enter into his judgment, mm -hmm. as is uh, reported in Daniel chapter seven, somewhere near thirteen or fourteen, Amen. where, he, where he, he came, he came into the Father mm -hmm. to to receive his kingdom. Yep, where he could be, begin judgment. That's right. And 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 so, what a great what a, this 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 midnight cry, and then and then the door the door was open, mm -hmm. and 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 the door is still open for the most holy place. Right. right. And, and the door for, for us to go. For us to go in, but the world, the world has, the world has not, has not entered in. Have not entered in. That's right. And, and we know about the, the reason why the, uh, the apostate Protestantism won't enter in is because in, into that door is only one article of furniture, which contains the, the Ten Commandments of God, which contains the Sabbath commandment. They don't, they don't want to go in. That's right. And so and you go ahead on. And so therefore. They still in a holy place experience. They still sinning and repenting every day. <laughs> and then the devil told me that the devil told me it should be no be sin and repenting. We should put away all sin and not sin anymore. I, I, that should be our, our concept of our mind. Not that we won't sin, but our mind's concept should be: no, I must not sin against God. I must have the Holy Spirit abide in my heart, my mind, and soul. I must be outside afflicting my soul than the devil told me. And sin should be put away already. But when you live in a holy place experience, you often to sacrifice every day. Every day. You ain't trying to have victory because you say Christ's blood is cleansing you every moment of the day. And so you take it, you count in the blood of God a non effect. You count in the sacrifice of God a non effect. Although we know Christ's blood cleansed us from what? All unrighteousness, right? Amen. How many times do I need to be cleansed from all unrighteousness? One. 
But because of God, because of grace of God, you know, I was sharing as we come to a pause, and we're gonna pick this back up in a couple hours, brothers and sisters. And then we're gonna verse uh, twelve. Uh, we're gonna pick it back up by the grace of God this afternoon. But you know, I was sharing. We cannot be saved by our own righteousness. Amen. The moment we say, "Lord, no, I want to. I, I can live right without you." And God may, if God would say, "Okay, go ahead, go right ahead." Try. And once you try and you succeed and you fail one time, you're forever lost. But because we said, Lord, I cannot do anything without you. I need your blood, your mercy, your grace. So therefore, if you fall, then Christ is cleansing from all unrighteousness. That's not not that's why it's not our righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. Amen. Amen. His sacrifice. So when the midnight cry is given, brothers and sisters, and if we are not made our calling election sure, and if we don't have the Holy Spirit in us, and not and matter of fact, when I come back, we're gonna when we come back by God's grace, we're gonna go to Timothy. As I read verse 12, we're gonna go to 2 Timothy, brothers and sisters, and see what it means why the why the virgins, the why the foolish virgin didn't have enough oil. Amen. Amen. Then we're gonna go to Romans 1. And see why the foolish virgin didn't have enough oil. Then we're gonna go over the Christ object lesson, and then it's gonna be laid on so beautiful, brothers and sisters. I cannot wait to get to it this afternoon. So we might not have a question this afternoon because sometimes my questions take a long time. So we're gonna go right into our study. Amen. We're gonna have a short help to listen. And then we're gonna go right into the study, brother. So, brother and sister, so please, I'm gonna pause here and we're gonna pick this up by the grace of God in a couple hours. And I can keep going until about sunset, but I know. We, we some need to eat because the journey is long. And God told Elijah, have the message given on Mount Carmel, come and eat a piece of morsel and bread. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to go eat a little, little piece of morsel and bread, get enough strength for the journey. Amen. 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 And then come back and stand firm like men and men. Amen. 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 That song says, Ready, steady soldiers, onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. That's right. Anybody know that song? Do you have that? Who knows that song? It's in our hymnal. Can we sing that song as we come to a close, brothers and sisters? As we, no, I'm sorry, as we come to a pause. And, to the, and what time are we coming back this afternoon? The song? 3.30. 3.30, brothers and sisters. So we're going to start on time. 3.30, be here at 3.30. My time, 2.30. Yo, time, 3.30, somebody else time, 12.30, if somebody else can be back with us. But brothers and sisters, let us be ready to receive, because the midnight cry is coming soon, amen? Amen. And the, I'm telling you, in, the, in the Christ object lesson, this thing is laid out so beautiful, so beautiful. It, and, the, and I want you to just, I, don't eat too much, because you're going to be falling asleep, because I'm going to do a lot of reading today. And you have to eat enough. <laughs> So you won't be hungry and enough that you won't be full. Amen. Amen. I don't want you thinking that, you know what, oh, I'll be glad when this old son go eat some more. I don't want you thinking that way. So just eat enough, be temperate, and to be content. Amen. Oh, we got we got that on with Christian soldiers. Yes. Can we Thank sing you. that? Go ahead, somebody sing it. You got it, Michelle? Sister Gloria, can y'all sing it? Amen. All right, this is hymn number 27 in our Time for Singing hymnals. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, Leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus. Going on before. Let me, let me pause you there for a second. As we sing the song, as we pick it up one one more note, pick it up a note. 
we got to sing with urgency, like Christ is coming right now. I was onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. I mean, if you can sing that one note higher and a little, little faster. Praise God. At the sign of triumph, Satan's host doth flee. On them, Christian soldiers, on to victory. Hell's foundations quiver at the shout of praise. Brothers, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Man, that's good, sister. Brothers and sisters, we must be marching. We must be marching to the midnight cry. We must be prepared, amen. We must be prepared, brothers and sisters. When the midnight cry come, and you're not ready, you won't be ready. You'll be in Revelation 22, 11, where it says, those who are unjust will be unjust still. Those who are filthy, let them be filthy still. Those who are righteous, let them be righteous still. Those who are holy, let them be holy still, brothers and sisters. So we want to be right with Jesus, amen? And the only amen. way that we can be right with Jesus is we allow him into our hearts and we invite him in, amen? So as we pause, and is there any question or comments and something may not have been clear? Any question or comments or something that may not have been clear? So the, 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 reason, the reason that the holy place experience is sinning and repenting is because when Jesus died at the cross, and I'm just saying in light of the sanctuary service, is that when Jesus died on the cross, um, he became our sacrifice and he went to the holy place. I, I guess I'm trying to understand. I thought every part of the sanctuary was holy. It is. And that's my point. See, the, the, the concept of, 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 of most people, Spirit of Bob says, when Christ entered the most holy place, holy place, most people stayed into the holy place when the door was shut. And most, most people stayed in the holy place and Satan came in to bless them. So in other words, they having that same mentality, their their daily, daily acts of forgiveness. There is no sin in the sanctuary service, but sin is put to an end. In other words, only person who cares upon cares that sin is Christ Jesus. Amen. He's a sin barrier. But so, but that concept of, of the of the holy place experience is, is misconstrued about sin and repentance. That's not the idea of God's, but it's for the for the uh, 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 person in Jesus, the servant in Christ must, by the God's grace, overcome sin, in thought and in deed. As Bible says, bringing every thought to the beings of Christ. Amen. And and is this a true statement, Brother M. K. That, as you said earlier, in the holy place was the daily sacrifice. So that implies sinning and repenting because it's a it's a continual versus the most holy place. Well, no, as a concept. No, the, the, it, the idea was not, in the holy place of spirit, the idea was not to continue to sin either. Sin in and out of court. But that's what the daily, that's what the daily service was brought before Jesus, before the priest to offer for the day of atonement. And then now God desires us never to sin. But people have a misconstrued, a, a, a misunderstanding of what the daily, daily place experience involved. The people were constantly bringing sacrifice every day, preparing, waiting for the day of the of the uh, of the sacrificial system on uh, on the day of atonement. But God never designed for us to sin. God never wanted us to sin because the service is set up for the priest to accept the daily sacrifice every day. But the day of atonement definitely. Sin is supposed to be put away because judgment against where? In the house of God. And, and also, it is handed out after the day of atonement. So therefore, God wants us to have the mindset, sin is supposed to end in the outer court. But because we in the, most people in a motor, most, most people in a holy place experience, they count the, they count in the blood of God a non-effect. 
And so God is trying to get us to understand that we must present our bodies daily as a what? Living sacrifice without spotted blemish. Anybody got any comments? Yes. Yes, sir. And, and um, uh, con not conversely, well, maybe, maybe. Similarly, uh, we, today, today, seven, many Sabbath keepers go, as it were, um, parallel, parallelically, <laughs> anyway, uh, in, into 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 the Sabbath service every Sabbath, and but forgetting that the call is is for us to be holy or sinless mm -hmm. every day, all during the week, but mm -hmm. not just not just go to church on the Sabbath, just you know for the to to fulfill the the uh, obligation. And the calling, as it were, and so that, and so many feel as though by just going into the sanctuary on the Sabbath that we are we are fulfilling the word of God and the will of God, missing the whole story. And the Lord had me look. See, last night when we were talking about the First Thessalonians four, you know, uh, regarding the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the beginning of that chapter, my Bible says, "Call to holiness," mm -hmm. and then. Then the the uh, dead in Christ arrive in Christ. That means that means those who who who, who are dead in Christ when He comes are those who at, at at some point in their life living became sinless. Amen. That's right. That's right. And and of course those who are alive and remain, we know they're not still in sin. That's right. They're sinless. That, that's what I was saying last night in, in First Thessalonians chapter four. That, mm -hmm. that that's that's proof that we can be perfect. Amen. In the, that's proof right there. A, a multitude of people which no man could number. Ah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, brother.